over true and we're about ready to tip it off. Jimmy Butler and quickly it goes to the Delta Devils and off the tip the basket by Kevin Burwell. And understand Sean Woods is a Rick Pitino disciple so he likes to get up and down the floor. That's part of the reason you'll see him go 12 deep. He, he likes to get guys moving up and down the floor trying to score and push the tempo. That tip was controlled by Jason Holmes that set it up as Darius Johnson Odom gets off to a quick start. So both teams have tallied in the first 30 seconds. Spinning move by Burwell swatted out of there by Vander Blue. Hit that one hard. Barely kept that in play. Get it a man to man. Philando Jones tries a three. DJO with the rebound. You'll see Mississippi Valley State running man to man quite a bit as well. Jimmy Butler. And the rebound cleared by Jason Holmes, who averages eight points and six rebounds per game for the Delta Devils. Three from the corner, way off for shot. Smith. You're not afraid to shoot it, though. Maybe he should have been. DJO for three. And that's what Marquette would like to see a lot more of. And it's there. Everybody knows it's there. His coaches do. His teammates, he knows it's there. It's just a matter of it working for him. And it's working for him so far tonight. Penetration and the block again by Vander Blue. Vander Blue on pace to break my school record for block shots in the, in the game. <laughs> with a lot less size than you had to work with. And that helps create a turnover. So Marquette ball. Golden Eagles, three blemishes on their non-conference schedule. Duke, Gonzaga, both of those in Kansas City. And then here a couple of weeks ago at the Bradley Center to Wisconsin. Crowder inside. And the rebound taken out by Orlando Smith. Up ahead quickly, score it, and a foul for Philando Jones, a junior from Greenwood, Mississippi. We have to give credit to Mississippi Valley State. They're doing a great job of limiting Marquette to one shot opportunity and then getting it out quickly and going to the other end. We talked about Patino's pace of game and how, how Sean Woods likes to play up tempo, and we're seeing it early on. Dwight Bikes picked up the foul. Jones averages five points, four rebounds per game, and ties it up at five. Pressure in the backcourt by the Delta Devils. Trying to another, take Marquette out of rhythm. Another hallmark of Rick Pitino basketball. Pressure full court for 40 minutes if you can. Butler has it taken away there as D'Angelo Jackson stripped it. It's a homecoming for him out of Pius by way of Creighton, Green Bay, and Fort Smith Community College in Arkansas along a winding road to Mississippi Valley State and then back to Milwaukee for this game. Tries the three and hits. Welcome home, D'Angelo. He's got quite a few family and friends, I'm sure, sitting behind the Mississippi Valley State bench tonight. Blue is fouled. And he's their leading scorer. You see that confidence. Recognizes the shot is there, willing to step up and take it. As a senior at Pius, averaged 18 points per game, was second team All State, first team All Area. As a junior, he actually led the Popes to the state tournament in Madison. Burwell with the foul as Vander Blue hits the first. We're going to see Jamal Jones check into the game very early. He had a very nice offensive out in the, in the centenary game. I think career high 11 points, three or four from long range. Looks like he was going in for Vander, but Vander missed the shot, so he stayed a little. That was 11 points in 11 minutes. So as Jackson that time goes too fancy, turned it over. DJ Rose slipped. Wow, amazing he didn't get hurt on that yeah. play. Able to keep his balance up ahead, quickly sprinting out and missing is Orlando Smith. So a lot of activity, but no points out of that exchange. Blues jumper. And a push off going to be called underneath. I think that's the Kevin second. Burwell. Yeah. Burwell 
second foul. There's that slip we were talking about. That's the kind that you can really mess yourself up with. Yeah, he went to plant on that left foot, and nothing was there. Tried to make something out of it, but it just couldn't happen. Mel Jones in. Hit three threes in that game against Centenary, and Buzz Williams says he's really starting to get it. It's tough for freshmen to figure out all the demands and what's expected. But Coach is pleased with his progress and hopes to see the same from Devontae Gardner. Crowder's jumper is no good. And, you know, there's so much to get in college basketball. People look at a stat sheet and say, well, what is it, points, rebounds? And it just goes way beyond that. Positioning on the floor when you don't have the ball, where you're supposed to be defensively, what your rotations are, where you're supposed to help, where you're supposed to stay at home. And there's so many things for these young minds to absorb. Jackson misses the three. By the way, Paul Crosby, wearing number 32, has checked in for Mississippi Valley State. Talented junior, 6'8", out of Lansing, Michigan. Jones. Dwight Bikes. Bikes and D'Angelo Jackson with a history from playing in the city of Milwaukee together. Terrence Joyner is also in for the Delta Devils. And they now have taken a 10-6 lead as the basket goes to Paul Crosby. Coach Sean Woods had said Crosby had his academics in order as he came out of high school. He'd probably be playing for a Big Ten team right now. He's a very talented young man. Crosby gets the foul. As you look at Sean Woods, has to be pleased with the start for his team. They lead Marquette by four. Third Street in Milwaukee looking good this Christmas week, and so is Mississippi Valley State in the first five minutes or so of this game, leading Marquette 10-6, to six. and Jim, right off the opening tip, they have kind of set a tone. Oh, very quickly, not just like getting out in transition, but getting those rebounds and quickly moving the ball up the floor, and, and when the big guys are all running, and, you know, that's going to give you some trouble. You're going to have to have your track shoes on tonight for this game. Six points in the paint so far for the Delta Devils. Marquette off to a two for eight start. As you look at Sean Woods in his third year, a member of the Unforgettables, that 1992 Kentucky team of Rick Patino. And we'll have more on that a little bit later in the broadcast. Yes, his number 11 hangs from the rafters at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Quickly for Marquette, Jimmy Butler scores off the inbound. Well drawn up by Buzz Williams in the timeout. And very well done, and just a mental breakdown for Mississippi Valley State. You can't let that pass come into the lane off the baseline out of bounds. Nice pass inside, and they get two out of it from Philando Jones. And surprisingly, Paul Crosby in just two games, I think all he's played is two games, averaging five assists. Mississippi Valley State really needs that as a team. They're averaging 19 turnovers a game. They're not giving the assist, and it's great to have a big man that can come in and help you in that capacity. Dwight Bikes three is short. Rebound cleared by Jason Holmes. Holmes had 10 points in their loss at Kentucky. Sean Woods played briefly in the NBA with the Indiana Pacers. And that's an and one opportunity for Philando Jones, who's been impressive early. Seven points already for Philando. You see the big man make the no-look pass underneath. And this one was the play that just occurred as Jimmy Butler picks up the foul. And you've got to recognize that dribble penetration. Meet the ball handler outside of the lane. When you're inside and you try to draw that charge, it's very rare that you're going to get that from the officials. Well, we're only a little over five minutes in, but I have to imagine that Buzz Williams is thinking to himself, we've talked about 40 minutes of consistent play, and they're not off to that kind of start tonight that he's looking for. No, it's, you know, 40 minutes is going to come in another game. It won't come tonight, but there's still plenty of time remaining, 36 minutes, and he'd like to see this team put together as many of those minutes as who they are as possible and, and he talks about that quite a bit you know playing like we know we're capable of playing and playing with the identity that we know we have and teams slip in and out of that sometimes especially in the uh, early season Chris O'Toole came in and scored but it is answered by Paul Crosby 
Crosby had eight points, ten rebounds, six assists against the Wildcats of John Calipari in Kentucky. Six-point lead for the visiting Delta Devils. Crowder's floater. No good. Marquette keeps it. Marquette coming off that win over Centenary. Now another opportunity for Mississippi Valley State to stop the baseline out of bounds play. Travel on Dwight Bikes, so turnover by Marquette, a chance for Mississippi Valley State to build the lead. They have played a rather robust schedule. Their only win on a neutral floor over Georgia Southern. They've lost to Georgia, Indiana, St. Mary's of California, BYU, Butler, Ole Miss, Arkansas, Kentucky. Yeah, but the upside of that is they're not going to come in here and be awestruck and you know, be worried about the name or we're playing a Big East team. They're playing some of the top teams in the country and certainly the top conferences in the country. And they're battle tested at this point in the season. Well, you go to Rupp Arena and you play in front of at least listed over 23,000. You're not in awe of many situations as Vander Blue gets the rebound. Blue tries to take it all the way and does. An aggressive move by the freshman, but he saw the opportunity in the opening and Certainly your best chance is when the defense is not set. They're running back in transition, and he exploited it. Uh, kept looking for a spark. Crosby backs down Otule. A good job that time by Chris Otule holding his ground. DJ underneath to Jimmy Butler, fouled hard. He'll go to the line. Almost like a quarterback. DJ just came down, knew Jimmy Butler was going to be in that vicinity. It was almost a blind pass as he lobbed it up there. And Jimmy Butler just went after it. Jason Holmes picked up his first foul. So Jimmy Butler to the line where he's hitting 77% this year, averaging 15 points, seven rebounds per game. Crowder right back in for Mike, so a bigger Marquette lineup with a, a front line of O'Toole, Crowder, and Butler, and DJ Owen Blue in the backcourt. Again, you're going to see maybe some unconventional lineups with the illness with Reggie Smith and Junior Cadugan, really only nine available players and three guards for Marquette tonight. And whenever you've got a player like Jimmy Butler on your team, you got a guy that can play all five positions. That's a great thing to have. Off the turnover, DJ O misses. Marquette gets it back by Jimmy Butler. DJ O to Crowder, and Marquette pulls within one. Great hustle play. Jimmy Butler just hanging around. Picked off that pass, and then new DJ O is down there, and DJ O drew the defense for the pitch. Looking underneath to Crosby, who's double teamed by Butler and Crowder. Somehow got it out of there to Jackson, and a nice little short jumper by D'Angelo. And you can see how the big fella Crosby picks up those assists. He's got good court awareness. Crowder thought about a three, and he's hit his first three in nine straight games, but didn't pull the trigger, and O'Toole puts it on the floor. Always a uh, dangerous proposition for a big man. Knocked out of bounds. Marquette will have it when we come back to the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Marquette scoring here, but down three to the Delta Devils. Mississippi Valley State leading Marquette by three here in Milwaukee. And before he came over to the game tonight, Jim McElvain getting in his usual skate. <laughs> Versatile, multi-talented athlete. I've got those training skates with dual uh, skegs, but what are we see, looking at here? Well, you see the double team here. Chris O'Toole is going to get the ball in the post, and D'Angelo Jackson's all the way on the weak side. Chris O'Toole looking at Jason Holmes, thinking he's going to drop down, but Boom, right from behind him. He didn't even see him coming. And his teammates have to communicate that to him. Jimmy Butler's got to be yelling. A double team is coming, letting him know so he can make something happen and pass the ball out quickly because somebody will be open. Marquette fortunate that wasn't a turnover as they still have it. Jimmy Butler is fouled as D'Angelo Jackson reached in. D'Angelo had 17 in that loss to Kentucky, their last game. Fifth team foul on the Delta Devils with 11.28 left in the first half. 
And you see the Delta Devils defending baseline out of bounds. They don't they don't guard the ball. They leave a guy open out there. And that, that allows Marquette the opportunity to get the ball in the paint as we saw Jimmy Butler do on, on two plays prior. You would think that Sean Woods, who played for Patino, would learn to guard the ball, but that's a whole other story that we'll show you later. Crowder. And a whistle, a blocking foul, so Jay will go to the line. But Buzz Williams just raves about this guy, Jay Crowder, as you look at Sean Woods. Very energetic young coach, uh, resplendent in the pinstripes. Cox got the fouls first, but Coach Williams, Jim, talks about Crowder and how important he's going to be to this team this season. He really is. He brings a phenomenal rebounding presence. And he doesn't make a lot of mistakes at either end of the floor. He just makes good decisions. He recognizes when the shot is there to be taken or when he needs to pass the ball and rotate it. And, and defensively, he's there to help his teammates and creates a lot of space down low that makes it easier to grab rebounds. Splits the free throws, which is pretty much on par. He's just 57% from the line this year. That's an area he'd like to improve as Marquette has pulled within one. Mark Holmes is now in for Mississippi Valley State, brother of Jason Holmes, both from Chicago. I'm sure they've got some family here as well. Shot clock at eight. Jackson guarded by the bigger Butler, and now Otule comes out on him. Two to shoot. They're in trouble, and they're not going to get it off. Great defense by Marquette. And that was keyed by Chris Otule. He, his man came up to set the screen. Chris jumped out big, and Mississippi Valley State, instead of reacting by attacking the slower, larger defender, they backed up to the half court. Chris Otule closed in on that trap, and, and it was a scramble at that point, and, and they just couldn't recover. Mississippi Valley State didn't even get a look at getting a shot off. Dwight Bikes back in. He'll run the point. It was interesting. We were talking when the season started about finding minutes for three point guards, and two of them are six, so a lot of minutes, plenty of minutes for Dwight Bikes tonight. Jimmy Butler was open. Instead takes it a little closer, and that's good judgment. He scores. Nice little pump fake, got the defender off his feet, and it was just catch up. Jimmy put the ball on the floor, and they just tried to defend from behind, unable to do it. Marquette into the lead at the halfway mark of the first half. Otule awkwardly comes down, but gets the rebound. 9 2 run the last three minutes for the Golden Eagles, knocked out of bounds. Marquette will keep it. Eric Williams checks in for Marquette. We showed you him. In the open tonight, he was one of the guys who contributed on the boards in their dominance on the glass against Centenary. Now we see what looks like a 2-3 zone by Mississippi Valley. Crowder's bounce pass is knocked out of bounds by the Delta Devils. Yeah, you can keep a camera on Sean Woods almost all night. He's up and around and very active. And when you play for Rick Patino, I guess a lot of that rubs off because we know how Patino strolls the sidelines. Vander Blue, yes and a foul. What a beautiful play. It all starts with Darius Johnson Odom out on the wing, pump fake, froze the defender. And you see it right here, put the ball on the floor, then he's got to get help rotation. And as soon as that rotation came, he just kicked it to the baseline, saw Vanderblue open for the layup. Mark Holmes with his first foul. Vander 62% at the line this year. Has six points tonight, and Marquette's lead is four. He's certainly capable of far better than 62%, and, that, and that'll come. He's, he's a freshman, and for some guys, shooting free throws at this level is one of the biggest transmission, transitions they made. Vanderblue thought he had a clean strip so did Buzz Williams it happened right in front of him but they call the foul instead actually they <laughs> call it on DJO his first so Vander was not the one called as Mark Holmes leaves and Philando Jones back in Mississippi Valley State had the early lead. Now they're down four. Let's see how they respond to adversity. Keeping in mind, they've lost 
nine of their ten games. Bikes. Clever move. Nice. Slashed into the middle. Mississippi Valley had players in position. They weren't able to make it. Sean Woods doesn't like what he sees. He's calling a timeout. As you look at that drive by Dwight Bikes, have you noticed this year, Jim, it seems like Dwight is less and less settling for the outside jumper and attacking the basket more? Well, it's it's a higher percentage shot, and you know, that, he's taking what the defense gives him. You can't blame him for doing that. Would it have been a bad shot if he took it? Yeah, but he had a better option, and, and he went for it. 14-2 run for Marquette now enjoying their biggest lead inside Marquette basketball with Buzz Williams is an all-access look at the Golden Eagles basketball program this week an interview with junior forward Jay Crowder also a feature on the academic program for the Golden Eagles you can see inside Marquette basketball coming up tonight at 1030 also a couple showings tomorrow morning on Sports 32 your home for Marquette University Athletics always fun to take that show with the coach and we hope it gives you an inside look at the Marquette basketball program points in the paint Marquette with a slight edge and they now have a six point advantage overall after this 14 2 run. That's a three attempted but no good by Terrence Joyner. Devils keep it. Like that all Milwaukee matchup Jackson and Bikes. Whistle on the drive by Philando Jones. He'll go to the line. We saw a little bit of an adjustment last time defensively from Marquette. As soon as Paul Crosby caught the ball, Marquette was coming from the opposite side with a double team. This time, you can see the dribble penetration. Players there to help, but not there in time. Eric Williams with his first foul. And you can't fault Eric too much. He's trying to battle and get across the lane. And just got hung up with Jason Holmes and couldn't get to the position in time. Philando Jones has played well early tonight. It was interesting looking at his numbers so far this season, shooting 28% from the field, and up to nine points already this evening. And, and really, Jackson, Joyner, Burrell, the only guys that are regular three point shooters on this team, at least with any accuracy and consistency. DJO for three. Eight quick points tonight for DJO. And it's good to see. We like to see him coming on as we're getting closer and closer to the Big East. 47% on threes last year. Tonight, he came in at 26% for this season. It's been a, a glaring drop off. His one shining game, the Milwaukee game across the street, when he terrorized the Panthers for 29 points and was red hot. But other than that, for the most part, he's been searching for his stroke. Eric Williams jumper. That's his spot. He loves that baseline jumper. We see that from him. I don't, I don't know if he's got a more favorite spot on the basketball court than those mid-range baseline jumpers. Angelo Jackson's three, no good, but kept alive in there. And a strong move by Paul Crosby. He'll be at the line when we come back. But Darius Johnson Odom finding the range here tonight as Marquette has moved out to a nine-point lead. Marquette leading Mississippi Valley State by nine. The Golden Eagles started two for eight since then, nine of 12. Dennis Crosby with Jim McElvain. And Jim, what are you going to show us here? Well, we're going to take a look at Paul Crosby's last post up. He catches the ball and, and notice the white jerseys paying much closer attention to him. Dwight Bikes drops down right away. As soon as he dribbles, he's taking swipes at it. Crosby can't take that second dribble. He's got to pull up out of rhythm and take that, that jump hook. But Marquette paying very close attention to him, not wanting to give him a lot of room to operate in the low post. He's already got four points. He's already got two assists. And he's probably going to get a couple more points here at the line. Crosby hits the first. Marquette shooting 55%. Mississippi Valley State at 40%. Lead is now seven for the Golden Eagles, who trailed earlier in this contest. And Marquette's got limited film on Crosby. He's only played at the Arkansas and Kentucky game, so they don't have a good scout on him compared to the other players, but they know he's a certainly capable low post player and, and a good passer. Jimmy Butler awfully hard to stop when he can get to the rim like that. And Marquette just doing a great job right now 
attacking Mississippi Valley one on one, forcing their players to defend the ball, getting into that paint area, and great things are happening for them when they get those paint touches. Garrett Joyner out of Mississippi, part of his collegiate career at Eastern Utah. Bikes out of there with it, off the turnover. Wright takes it himself and it's blocked. Boy, getting back there, Jason Holmes with the rejection. And underneath the foul on O'Toole trying to stop Paul Crosby. Let's look at that block. Well, just an athletic hustle play. Dwight Bikes got out there, but give credit where credit's due. Jason Holmes made the effort, got down there with a tremendous play. That's tough to do. You say that with the left hand. He is left handed, but. To be able to go across the offensive player and get that block shot without hitting him too much with the body to draw a foul is a very difficult play to make in basketball. O'Toole will sit with two fouls. DJO also checking out as Jones and Crowder re enter. Crosby against Crowder and just bustles it over him. And that time Marquette did not come with the double team, gave him room to operate, time to get into rhythm, and you saw the outcome. Butler loses the handle, and here come the Delta Devils. Bad pass, and they turn it over, so Marquette catches a break there as that stops a little bit of momentum that Mississippi Valley State had going. Crowder thinking about a three, but decides not to. Jones. Now Crowder, and he does it again. The streak continues. Tell him, Dennis. Ten straight games he's hit his first three. Now, we won't talk about after that. <laughs> but the first three is always true. And he's shooting 40% from, from the field. I'm sorry, from long range on the season. That's not too shabby for anybody, let alone a big man. Well, I'll give you a little uh, hint. He's, he's one for 14 after his first attempt. But that first attempt... He's always good. And so is that. The three falls for Kevin Burwell. And back to back plays. We saw the ball go into Crosby. He scored on the previous one. That last one, he got the kick out for the hey, open. Hey, football. hey. There we go. Crowder hits back to back threes. And he's up to 10 points already. So the stat we just gave about how after the first attempt, his shooting percentage goes way down, at least for that shot, does not hold true. A long two is no good there for Terrence Joyner. Marquette's double-digit lead now. Crowder again. That's yes, a and a foul. Oh, oh. And Fuego. Three threes in a row, and this time a chance at a four-point play. The cardinal sin has been committed in college basketball. Fouling the three-point shooter. But Crowder. Almost single-handedly breaking open this game. Crosby gets his second foul. The long-range marksman. You can do a lot of things in college hoops, but you can't compare Duke basketball to Nazis. That's wrong. And you can't foul three-point shooters. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Floater in the lane in a friendly roll for Joyner. He comes in averaging almost 10 points per game. Well, you look for Crowder, don't you? I mean, yeah, absolutely. This time, down low. Oh, wow. That time he shows his versatility as it was a strong move inside. Time to make an adjustment defensively. When a player gets hot like that, you got to get the ball out of his hands. You just got to throw defenders at him and, and make him give it up. And Mississippi Valley State just not getting anything of quality offensively right now. 11 straight points for Crowder for Marquette. Jones tries a three. He didn't get the middle. Crowder, though, is fouled and he'll go to the line. And, and Jamail's looking at his hand. But, you know, <laughs> any, anytime a guy shoots an air ball, you got to look at your hand. Is there something going on there that maybe missed that? Mark Holmes with his second foul, so Jay Crowder to the line. He already has 15 points tonight. He had 17 against Green Bay, his previous high in a Marquette uniform. That should fall tonight, the way he's going. And fall in a hurry, maybe before half. 
We haven't talked about it much, but Joe Fulce went down with a deep contusion to his knee several games ago, and there's been more minutes inside for guys. And Jay Crowder happy to pick up that slack and produce at that, at that position. This is the second, so Marquette's lead is 14. Crowder on a personal tear. And, and you see this ball move. There's no screens on the ball. You know, there's no dribble penetration into the paint area. There's no post entry from Mississippi Valley. Just pass and jump shoot. It'll be Mississippi Valley State's ball when we come back. But lately, it has been the Jay Crowder show. Three after three as Marquette builds up a 14-point advantage. And then he takes it inside. Jay Crowder with 15 points, 11 in a row in one juncture, three for three on threes as Marquette has built up a 43 to 29 lead on Mississippi Valley State. Drink deeply from the fountain of offensive dominance that is Jay Crowder. Well, he gets the feeling it's fun to watch as he's already surpassed his average and as we mentioned a few moments ago, just two points off his season high of 17. And most importantly for Marquette, he took what was a pretty close game, and now they have a 14-point lead. And you see the ball go right in to uh, Crosby, and immediately Jake Crowder double teams. And blocks. He's everywhere. <laughs> Crowder up to 16 as they've changed the stats, so he's had an even better night already than what the last stat sheet had shown. Crowder working on defense. Can he keep Crosby out of there? Vander Blue helps out and strips it. Bites, oh, double oh. pump. Butler to Blue. And Blue did a great job of shielding the ball with his body. He saw Crosby coming over to help and able to extend and keep the defense away. He's got eight. Well, we've talked about Jay Crowder offensively, but here he is on defense working. Just scrambling in the post. Shot goes up. Boom! Out to half court. Start the break. Well, oh, he's feeling it. You can just tell the adrenaline rush that he has as Marquette now up 16. D'Angelo Jackson at the line. He's got five points so far tonight in his homecoming. Coming up at halftime on Sports 32, we'll have a Marquette feature, how you can give Marquette this holiday season. We'll look at the Big East showing in the top 10 and top 25. Also, first half highlights and stats at half. And Jackson hits them both. So Marquette's lead is 14. Darian Donald, number one, checking in for the Delta Devils for the first time tonight. And now we're officially 12 deep from Mississippi Valley State. Crowder. Now Devontae Gardner in. Only played in mop-up duty last three minutes or so on Saturday, as Buzz Williams says, just needs more consistency from him every day. Practice every play. And when he does that, he'll be on the floor more. And Buzz Williams says, hey, look, we know we need him in certain games in the Big East. That's the ninth turnover on the uh, Delta Devils, but that Devontae Gardner has to just bring it a little more consistently. Yep, both ends of the court. And not just him. A lot of guys vying for more playing time that have to bring it consistently if they want to see the court. Just roots himself in there on the offensive end, and then they play inside out, and DJO gets the three. Paul Crosby's a, a big man, but Devontae Gardner's bigger, and he's going to go wherever he wants to. 11 for DJO as he's found the three point range. But Crosby shows off his shooting skills. And he's up to 11. A little battle in there in the low post. Mississippi Valley State not sending a double team, not the big guys play. Butler misses. Well, if he can get the defensive end of the floor master, Gardner 
in his Marquette career can be very helpful just because of the body that you were talking about, Jim. It's, it's a unique skill set that he has. But the combination of a good body and very soft hands and, and great court vision. He knows where his teammates are and very capable of making passes and getting it in their hands in a position where they can do something with it. Turnover by the Golden Eagles, so Mississippi Valley State gets it back, trailing by 14. Joiner handles, finds Donald. Now the three Crosby misses, and Devontae Gardner walls off the rebound. Butler pulls up and hits. And again, we're seeing this from Mississippi Valley State. No screens on the ball, no paint touches, no post entry passes, just passing around on the perimeter and, and shooting jump shots, and it's it's not very effective for them offensively right now. Nine points for Butler tonight. Crowder has 16. DJO with 11. Crosby up to 11 for the Devils. Crosby in the corner. That's almost a turnover. Jackson saves it for them. The three is good. Straight up, Terrence Joyner. Almost an inadvertent paint touch caused by nearly a turnover from Marquette led to the points. Crowder tries another three. First miss of the night. That did his previous three. If he would have oh. that one. Man. And a three for D'Angelo Jackson. Mississippi Valley State within 10. Jackson has 10. Buzz Williams wants to talk about a late half situation here with 29.9 left. Angelo Jackson, former Milwaukee Pius star, lining up that three at them. And, it, and it's running with the high step. It's not complicated basketball. Terrence Joyner puts the ball on the floor, just a couple dribbles, gets into the paint area, forcing Marquette to collapse on him defensively. And that opens things up on the perimeter for D'Angelo Jackson to knock down that shot. D'Angelo Jackson back home. 6'1 senior. And uh, we said out of Pius, he's had some travels. Creighton, Green Bay. Fort Smith Community College in Arkansas and then Mississippi Valley State to conclude his collegiate career this year. Lots of gear. <laughs> Marquette can hold for virtually the last shot. There's nine tenths of a second difference. Shot clock, game clock. They yeah, they're not going to hold it. They're going to go in and score. Devontae Gardner, good and a foul. Marquette will lead at half tonight, and they are 7-0 this season, 43-6 and under Buzz Williams when they lead at half. This is one of the things we were talking about, Jim, about a lot to like about Gardner. Yeah, he's, he's not really overtly physical with his moves, just methodical. I'm going to the basket. I'm going. What are you going to do to stop me? Are you going to send a double team? No, then I'm going to keep going, and next thing you know, Paul Crosby's got his second foul, and Devontae Gardner's taking a shot two feet from the basket. Take that every time. I don't know if you share this, this uh, feeling that I have, but I think at least once this Big East season, he's going to help you win an important game. Yeah, I think he will, because he, he creates a lot of problems for teams defensively. He's a very difficult player to handle in the post, not just because he's so big and, and has such a good back to the basket game, but send your double teams. He makes smart decisions and good passes out of the post, and that's what's going to be the double whammy and really hurt you. But you won't be on the floor if you can't defend for Buzz Williams. We know that. Marquette gets it back, and they'll have a chance for another shot before half to build on the lead. DJO out to Bikes for three. He's fouled on the three with 1.8 seconds left. Two three-pointers getting fouled in the first half. You don't see that in an entire game very often. And on top of that, you commit the foul in front of your coach and your own bench. That's... Uh, not a good thing. And you can see Coach Woods over there saying, hey, contest, get your hands up, but play without fouling on that shot. Fikes builds on Marquette's season high for points in a first half. They're up to 54 with a chance for two more. 
Well, it shouldn't come as a surprise. We, we talked about the pace of the game that Mississippi Valley State likes to play. They like to get up and down the floor. Marquette certainly not adverse to that kind of basketball. So not surprisingly, the scores a reflection of that. Mike's converts. Jackson short at half. So Marquette shakes off a sluggish start, fueled by Jay Crowder's outburst. Marquette leading Mississippi Valley State 56 to 40 at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Our halftime programming straight ahead. Jay Crowder in that first half for Marquette as they lead Mississippi Valley State 56 to 40. Just about ready to start the second half. Leading scores for the respective teams. Paul Crosby with 11 with the scoring honors for the Delta Devils. D'Angelo Jackson from Milwaukee Pius with 10. The aforementioned Jay Crowder with 16, one off his season high for Marquette. And DJO with 11, including three of four on three settle in for a good second half as Marquette coming into this game at eight and three Mississippi Valley State at one and nine Vander blue inbounds right in front of us and these plays out of timeouts or, or at the beginning of halves are always interesting for me because the coaches have the opportunity to set up whatever they want offensively and defensively and it's it's neat to see who executes better just joining us, Reggie Smith, Junior Cadugan, not here because of illness, so that limits the rotation and options for Buzz Williams. DJO. Jimmy Butler able to get it back to Vander Blue. Vander staying with it, saves it, but to Mississippi Valley State. And D'Angelo Jackson blocked by TJO. Elevation. And you see Dwight Bikes hustle down there to get that position. And in a way, that really helped Darius Johnson to make that play because it forced D'Angelo Jackson to take off. And he left early. And once you're up in the air, you're fully committed. As a seven footer who had his share of blocks in his career, that has to be one of the sweetest moments in basketball. It, it, it has to be emasculating to the guy that you you blocked that shot. It's it's a split second thing that happens, and if you're quick enough and you have the reaction where you can do it, boy, it, it's a lot of fun to do. And he's up in the air, boom, go get him. And you can see just the quickness and explosion by Darius Johnson Odom. Well, unfortunately, on that play, uh, D'Angelo got. Dinged up. Just as yeah, he got dinged up, and they're looking at him on the Mississippi Valley State bench, so we'll keep you updated there. Hopefully he can return in his homecoming at 10 in the first half, and certainly a big part of what the Delta Devils are trying to do. Joiner for three. Terrence Joiner. And he can knock that one down. More than half of his shots are three, so Marquette's certainly expecting him to look for that shot. Lose jumper. Rims off. with a little stutter step turn on blue pressuring the defense is fouled as Jason Holmes will get the foul his second and I'll tell you what I like about that with Vander blue he identifies the two defenders and he chooses the bigger of the two and goes after that guy because he's less likely to be able to to adjust on the run and try to make a defensive play, swipe at the ball, whatever. It's easier to go into his body and try to draw the foul than it is to risk a guard being a little more quicker with their reaction and being able to strip the ball or disrupt your shot. I have to assume, Jim, that Blue's all-around game is conducive to the Big East, that he'll fit right into that conference. Yeah, he certainly will. And, and you see game by game as he goes out and gets into more opportunities to make plays that he's just doing tremendous things with the ball and away from the ball. Burwell had a chance at a corner three but opted not to. And Marquette out of there with it. DJO. 
Nice lead for Jay Crowder, and that's a new season high. And I think Marquette Darius, high for Crowder. Darius Johnson Odom dribbled through every single defender for Mississippi Valley State on the way to making that pass. Crowder up to 18, surpassing the 17 he had against Green Bay. And a long way to go to build on that. Pipes got up in the air, but Burwell could not take advantage. Mismatch there. Pipes trying to guard the much bigger Jason Holmes was able to get inside. Good handle for the big fella, too. DJO tries another three. You bet. Natural. Such confidence with that shot. It's good to see. Not many will remember the non-conference struggles on the three if he can start to line them up like he is tonight in Big East play when it really counts. Marquette's lead at 17. Bikes, long two, said one official. The one that was closest to it, doesn't matter, missed it. Mississippi Valley State led by as many as six very early. Now down 62 to 45. Jason Holmes reverses to Joyner. His three. Errant. EJO. To Jimmy Butler the hard way to kind of ricochet off some Delta Devils and Jimmy's foul. Jimmy Butler did a great job on that play. Really, Darius Johnson Owen gets into the paint, struggles to get rid of the ball and try to get it to him, and Jimmy Butler making lemonade out of lemons. Marquette leading by 17. Golden Eagles assistant coach Scott Monarch, a three-time basketball letter winner at Mississippi Valley State, as you see him to the left of Buzz Williams, right on your screen there. Graduated in 1990. Lots of ties to Mississippi Valley State, and I know that uh, Buzz Williams delighted with his entire staff, including Scott Monarch. Jimmy Butler hits the first very smoothly as O'Toole and Williams come in. Several substitutions for the Delta Devils as well. That double double that Jimmy had against Centenary was the fifth of his career. There'll be more to come in this senior year. Almost certainly. Hits them both, and Marquette up 19. And still the full court pressure by Marquette. And a timeout taken by Mississippi Valley State, much to the, to the delight of Buzz Williams, who loves to see that kind of work. That'll take us to a break with Marquette holding a 19-point advantage on Mississippi Valley State. Marquette averages 80 points per game. They're well on their way tonight to maybe hitting 100 as they've already scored 64, up 19 on Mississippi Valley State. And seeing an awful lot all over the floor from Darius Johnson Odom. Yeah, defensively off the ball and then Look at that. Goes by every single defender from Mississippi Valley State. Dishes it off right at the end. Just a phenomenal job playing with a lot of energy and enthusiasm tonight. The shot's falling for him. He's got to feel good with the season struggles that he's had so far from long range. Well, as you look at the breakdown right there, the most important thing, I think, is that four for five on threes because I know that Marquette is built on defense, and, and understandably so. But if they're going to do anything in the Big East, DJO has got to start hitting threes, and he's done that tonight as Vander Blue comes off with the steal and then is fouled. He, he not only has to hit those threes for himself, but for the team, Marquette, as well as their shooting from the floor, they've struggled a little bit so far this season, shooting from long range. And we talked about it during the last game, the departure of Murray Sacker, David Kubion, and Lazar Hayward, all three of those guys really quality three-point shooters and, and all three guys shoot high percentage three-point shots this is the end of a five-game homestand for Marquette so far they're three and one with that loss to Wisconsin Mississippi Valley State is ending in a five-game 11-day road trip like uh, the Ooh. NBA as uh, Sean Woods has had them on the road 
And Marquette's lead up to 21, the biggest of the night for the Golden Eagles. Pressure still on. Unrelenting. Tipped by Butler. Almost stolen by Blue. Joiner misses. Knocked out of bounds to Marquette. Pretty shaky possession there for the Delta Devils. Great pressure by Marquette. When we come back, we'll explain why Mississippi Valley State coach Sean Woods is linked to college basketball history. Stay with us. Mississippi Valley State coach Sean Woods played on the Unforgettables, that Kentucky team in 1992 that played Duke in the memorable regional final at the old Spectrum in Philadelphia. This is Sean Woods putting Kentucky up by one. They thought they had this thing won until that guy, Christian Leitner, on this legendary shot off the pass from Grant Hill. So he ends up being the hero that lives on through the years instead of this great play by Sean Woods. Yep, Christian Leitner got all the commercials and endorsements. And Sean Woods is coach of Mississippi Valley State. He could have been on that commercial. What was that, vitamin water with Rick Pitino? <laughs> yes. That's hilarious. Well, Sean Woods is still beloved in Lexington, though. That number 11 hanging from the rafters at uh, Rupp Arena. That whole team, they were called the Unforgettables because that was what came out of the whole scandal, and they had the short numbers that they had for a while, and Rick Pitino patched together that program. And Sean Woods was a big part of that. And then they were returning to prominence in 1992 when they lost that game to Duke for the right to go to the Final Four. All right, back here with Marquette leading Mississippi Valley State 66-45. Dennis Krause, Jim McIlvain, our unparalleled producer-director, John Walsh, and a great crew on hand tonight in Milwaukee. Blue looks inside for O'Toole, knocked out of there. And Donald takes it all the way and scores. What a nice play there by Gary and Donald, senior from Columbus, Mississippi. There's always something to play for in the game, regardless of the score. Coaches often break these games down into the timeout segments. And did we win that last segment between timeouts? And there's always things to build on, and effort and hustle are always a part of this. Players individually trying to get more time on the floor. And Prove their worth. Five minutes into the second half with Marquette up 21. Limited numbers tonight because of illness. Reggie Smith, Jr. Kadugan not with the team because of a virus. Joe Fulce out with a knee injury. Yep. Well, I hope he can play again. I mean, you, you don't want his Marquette career to be over. He's, he's so linked to Buzz Williams and such a likable guy that the team loves. You always want a player's career to end on their terms. And I've never heard of a player ending a career on their terms because of an injury. Mississippi Valley State with 20 to shoot as they inbound. Mark Holmes is back in there. Number 30, the 6'6 sophomore from Chicago. D'Angelo Jackson, good to see him healthy. Firing away at a three, but missed. He was out for a little bit after that one block. O'Toole can't grab it. And instead, Paul Crosby wanted a whistle, didn't get it. Flailing away for one. It's the rebound, so another possession. Cross-court pass. And after all of that, a holding foul on Eric Williams. As a second. Things just too easy right now for Mississippi Valley State. I wouldn't be surprised to see Devontae Gardner coming in for Chris O'Toole. That last post entry pass, Chris O'Toole dead behind the post, meaning his hand was not even contesting the passing lane. And coaches don't like to see that at all. For everything else that happens, the offensive rebounds, you've got to be there defending in the post. And Look at that rebounding margin. I mean, that's just hustle and effort, and, and a lot of that falls on the big guys. We pointed out in our open how Marquette, for the most part of their wins, has dominated the rebounding, but 
not so tonight. The Delta Devils have come in here from the south and scrapped their way to a rebounding advantage, although the numbers that count, a 19-point lead for Marquette, count the most anyway. These are big minutes for Devontae Gardner if you weren't with us in the first half. This is the guy who Buzz Williams wants to see some more consistency from, particularly on the defensive end. We've seen how nimble he is and talented on the offensive end around the basket, but consistent defensive effort is what they're looking for as Darian Donald stepped out of bounds. And those are the kind of unforced, really mental errors that just drive coaches nuts. Know where you're at on the floor. Know, know where your positioning is. There's almost no excuse for stepping on the sideline in a situation like that. Do you remember, Jim, your freshman year at Marquette? When did you start to get it? When did it come together for you? Uh, I don't know. Parts of it seemed to come very quickly, but uh, I think it was late in my freshman season. I had a, a pretty decent game at Butler, and it just felt like it did in high school. And I think that's the best way to equate it for these guys is I scored like I did in high school. I rebounded. I blocked shots. passed the ball. got steals. Whatever. And you started playing at the same pace and the same speed as everybody else. And, and sometimes there's an adjustment there. And we saw Devontae Gardner on the offensive end. Here he is on the defensive end. Let's see if they called Devontae or Crowder for that foul as they were trying to keep Crosby out of there. Gardner got his first. Apparently, Devontae hit Crosby so hard he jarred him about 15 feet beyond the three point arc. Embellishment. <laughs> Continue your thought though about about Gardner. What what do you see him really getting better at, and what what areas does he really need to improve on? Well, he's just got to take advantage of, of his body defensively. And, and I talk to young post players about this all the time. When you're using your body defensively and leaning on people and, and making them work for every step that they take on the court, it tires them out. It makes them less effective offensively. And he can use his body to his advantage in that regard. He, he doesn't have to be this ultra quick player, but get the arm up and lean on that person. Make them work for every bit of post position that they're trying to establish. And by the time that they get the ball, and if they're able to make a move on you, they're not going to have the same level of energy to get that shot off as they would have if you just kind of stand behind them, let them do what they want. Well, you can see as we speak about Devontae Gardner that he's getting some instruction from both Scott Monarch and Buzz Williams. Jamal Jones will await his turn to come back in for the shooter, Jimmy Butler. Mark Holmes got that foul, his second. Jimmy has a dozen tonight. And he'll exit momentarily. As you get a good look at Jamal Jones. What do you see in Jones? I mean, obviously, we talked about 11 points in 11 minutes on Saturday. He's coming on. It's starting to click for him offensively. Defensively is, is where he's really got to focus in and, and understand. And you can see the wheels turning in his head as he's trying to make plays and scoring on that time. You know, he wants to make the right play, but at this point he's still thinking the game a lot and, and not playing in terms of just natural reaction defensively. And when he gets more to, to that automatic sense where he just knows what to do and does it versus trying to think about what they told him and, and scouting and shoot around, he'll, he'll be a much more effective player defensively. Jay Crowder scores to get to 20 points on the night. It was his spree in the first half that really broke this game open. Jones gets the steal, takes it up, and is fouled. And the foul called on Darian Donald. Part of the thing for a, a freshman, whether it's Gardner, whether it's Jones here at Marquette, whether it's anybody, is you have to build up that trust of the head coach for them to, oh, yeah. to play you in a game that really means something. Uh, Jimmy Butler can go out there and, and he probably wouldn't, but he could go out and back-to-back and -back defensive possessions and make a mistake and the coaching staff would still have a lot of confidence in him because they have a longer relationship and a lot more knowledge of, of his game and what he's capable of doing and how he helps the team. But you know, when you have that limited background and experience with a coaching staff, it's it makes them a little more gun-shy with you and, and you really have to go out of your way and and make a lot of great plays to solidify your position there because it's it's a lot easier for one bad mistake or two bad mistakes to tear all that down and set you back quite a bit. Darting into the lane. 
is Joyner. He's fouled. You know, I was thinking, too, the contrast, Jim, between the freshman as Bikes gets his second foul and, and a transfer from junior college like Crowder. Buzz Williams has raved about how Crowder's been able to make the adjustment. Well, here's a guy who's played at a higher level than high school, who's older, he's more mature physically, emotionally. That's, that's an easier adjustment than a kid who's one year out of high school. It really is, and there's so many other factors that go into it, whether it's their high school coach and team or, or their AAU coach and team. You never know what kind of... I mean, coaches know because they do their background, but it, there's so much variance in be between what players are taught defensively, what kind of concepts they pick up, and, and as a result, you can have kids come into your program and, and you're trying to tell them what a shallow triangle is, and they have no idea what you're talking about, and say, like, I'm no good in geometry. It's a shallow <laughs> triangle, come on. <laughs> we go to a break with Marquette leading Mississippi Valley State 74 to 52. Christmas week and the fans are loose and ready, excited. Marquette leading Mississippi Valley State 74 to 52. Hey, just in time for the holidays, it's the Sports 32 Roundtable Clip Show. I don't envy producer Tom Kurtz. He had to sift through the whole year and somehow came up with the most lively discussions and amusing moments, hopefully. And that airs tonight and tomorrow night. And you can also see it later this week only on Sports 32. Back to live action. Marquette leading by 22. And you see Mississippi Valley State in what looks like a 2-3 zone. Inside for Crowder. That time missed it. He hasn't done much of that tonight. Sean Woods is still up coaching every single possession. This team's down 22, but don't tell him that they're one and nine and on their way to their 10th loss, it would appear. Paul Crosby. The out top three won't go for Jackson. And a tough break that time for Jamal Jones. Boxing out his man. Was, was that one on Dwight Bikes? I thought that was Jamal Jones. Okay. He got Bikes for his third. Well, both of those guys. Doing what coaches always say, find a body, put a body on somebody when the shot goes up, block them out, and they do that, and then the offensive player jumps for the ball and you get blown with the whistle. Crosby, it's what? You can't help but be impressed by him. Yeah. You can see why uh, Coach Woods said if everything was in order for him in high school, he'd be in the Big Ten. 14 points tonight. Marquette didn't double team that time. He was waiting for it, looking for it, trying to coax it. Hey. That's how you bust wide open that 2 3 zone. That foul line area very vulnerable. You get into the paint, it's, it's almost game over. 16 for Darius Johnson. Adam. He's hit the threes, and that time working inside. Coming up on 10 minutes to go in this one with Marquette Lee, 76-54. Five to shoot. Jackson's got to go. Got to get it up there. And shot clock violation as Marquette's defense gets it done. That's the 15th turnover for the Delta Devils. And that's almost inexcusable. Your bench is at that end of the court. They should be yelling and screaming at their guys. And I understand it's tough emotionally for a player to watch your team being down 22 points, but help your teammates out. You know, the, the bench is you know, sullen. Yes, melancholy. Two very good words that you have shown. Your wordsmith ways for Marquette education as Jimmy Butler scores underneath. And he has 15. When you're one and nine and you've been on the road seemingly forever and you're down 24, I guess sullen would be an accurate word to describe your mood. 
And another turnover by the Delta Devils, who have lost some of their spirit from the first half. DJ O, another three. And that's going to force Sean Woods to call a timeout and talk about it. Marquette has blown it wide open up 27. As DJ O, five of seven on threes. Let's take a look at Marquette in action here. And, you know, I know Darius Johnson Odom had a 29 point outburst. But I, you know, you look at what he's doing offensively, making those passes, knocking down shots, and I think really this is his most complete game offensively and defensively, probably his best game of the season so far. You know, even even with that 29-point game hanging out there, that a lot of that was the first half of, of that Milwaukee game, and, and Darius Johnson oh, just a really balanced effort here tonight. 19 points. 15 of them coming on the five threes that he's hit in seven attempts. So that'll help that three point shooting percentage that has been way too low for DJO's taste and for Marquette's taste. As you look at the fans enjoying this one, back to action. And the penetration all the way with determination by Philando Jones. Too easy. Doesn't matter what time of the game it is, what the score is. You can't let that go. Oh. Crowder and two more, and he's up to 22. Almost too easy going right back at you. <laughs> the pass almost went in. <laughs> that would have been the play of the night. Mississippi Valley State retains possession. His second and Jimmy Butler blocked out like he was supposed to and Smith tried to go over him and got caught Marquette shooting over their season average tonight at a healthy 55 percent a lot of contact there between the two number 23s bikes and Philando Jones Philando Jones a little upset he thought the ball got knocked loose and you know, it was pretty much free game he had as much a right to it as anybody else and Disappointed with that call, I'm sure. Bonus situation. Bikes at the line. 17 foul of the Delta Devils. You can see the pieces to the puzzle there for, for Coach Woods. And, and you've got to think when they come off of this road trip, when they get into conference play, um, well, as much as they didn't like getting throttled all over the country, it's going to help them. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to face that level of competition in conference play. And they've got some very talented players. Very athletic team, very quick and, and good all around game. Offensive rebound by Smith. Gets it out of there to Crosby. D'Angelo Jackson. And a nice scoop shot by Philando Jones, who scores in bunches. And when you see possessions like that, you know, that's got to be encouraging for Mississippi Valley State. They know if they can put together more of those, they're going to have a really successful season in spite of what's happened early on for them. When we come back, Vander Blue will be at the line. Under eight minutes to go at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee with Marquette in command of Mississippi Valley State. Get up big on Mississippi Valley State under eight minutes to go. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Time Warner Cable Sports 32 and Marquette University. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Time Warner Cable Sports 32. Each team with four players in double figures. Jay Crowder leads all scores with 22. DJO 19. Jimmy Butler 15 for Marquette. Vander Blue with 11. Paul Crosby leading the visiting Devils with 14. As you look at Jay Crowder, who has set a season high in a Marquette uniform for Mr. Crowder. Vander Blue, his season high is 21. He hits the first. He's well short of that, but has played well again tonight. 
know, we were talking about freshmen and the adjustment that they have to make. This is a freshman who I think has come in from day one and seamlessly fit in. And I think a lot of that might have had to do with that uh, Team USA U18 team and that competition that he had there. Well, that certainly helped quite a bit. But even before that, he's a pretty talented player. Bacon, you know, kids these days in high school, with the way AU basketball is and the exposure and the traveling these kids do, they play against some pretty top flight competition. A lot of them do before they ever get to college. Came from the very high-powered Madison Memorial program, which has had a, a run of great success in recent years as Jimmy Butler scores. Only because they're not in the same division as we've seen St. Catharines. Ooh. The old biases are still there. Yeah. <laughs> not any pretense of being neutral. You think about the players that have come through Madison Memorial. Well, My goodness, players. dating back to uh, Wesley Matthews and we've had Mankaville, Damon, Vander Blue, Eric Williams back in for Marquette. St. Catharines has players at Division I programs all over the country. They got guys playing professionally in Europe. And you can go all the way back to Jim Jones. Come on. Well, Jim Jones, certainly one of my favorites, and maybe the best. I'm going to say this with Jim Ackerman sitting right here. Maybe the best big man in Marquette history. So, right? I'm not even the best big man named Jim from my high school. <laughs> You've been in his shadow at both places. Yep. All right, good shadow to be in, good company. And if economic circumstances of his family hadn't dictated that he leave Marquette early in those days of hardship and jumping out early to the ABA and the NBA, who knows what kind of numbers Jim Jones would have put up in his Marquette career. I'll tell you one thing, I think it, it might have been tough for UCLA to win all those championships in a row because Marquette might have given them a really good run for their money with Jones on that team. D'Angelo Jackson scoring for Mississippi Valley State to make it 89 to 63. He's up to 12 points, the former Pius star. Well, you look at this game tonight, Jim, and, and it's really the last game for Marquette that they can kind of experiment before you get to Vanderbilt next week in a non-conference game. And then January 1st, bright and early, 10 in the morning, the East tips off here against West Virginia. When you see that upcoming schedule, that's what's ahead. You look at these teams and their, their records, 8-2, and 8-2, 8-2, 11-1, 10-1. I mean, that's, that's not easy basketball. These are all really, really good teams. And... And that's what the Big East is. If you can, and that's why if you can survive playing in this league, come out with 19 or 20 wins on the season, you're almost a lock for the NCAA tournament. About six minutes left with Marquette up. With the limited numbers that Buzz Williams has tonight, I'm sure he's walking a balancing act as far as how long to play certain guys. He has to play some out of necessity because of the illnesses and injuries. Tipped in by Eric Williams. Good hustle and second effort by Jake Crowder keeping that alive and Eric Williams just lurking around the basket actively. D'Angelo Jackson straight on three and he has 15. I know this is special for him playing on this floor, the town where he grew up, and he's acquitted himself nicely. Shook off a little bit of an injury earlier in the game. Marquette really working the ball, making Mississippi Valley State defend them at every position. And you'll hear this coaching staff talk about side, top, side. Getting the ball from one side to the top to the other side. Going back and forth. Every time we do that, it seems like the, the defense breaks down just a little bit more. Or you get that many more looks at seams or opportunities to attack the basket. Substitutions for Buzz Williams as he mixes and matches here. He's got... Blue, DJO, Jones, Williams, and Gardner on the floor. Jones 
three is in and out. Marquette will improve to nine and three. Mississippi Valley State will drop to one and ten. And that game at Vanderbilt will be interesting because of the unique bench and floor situations that they have there. They, uh, they recruited me pretty hard coming out of high school. That was a big selling point because it's it's pretty much unique now. It was commonplace back in the day when, when Dennis was going for college. But you know nowadays everybody has the benches on the sideline. So uh, it's 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 not really a challenge for the players. It's tough for the coaches. The benches are behind the basket. Yeah. Which is for those that don't know at, at, at Vanderbilt. And it's odd to watch a game there because you're just you're just not used to seeing the coaches standing up in that area. That whole building is odd. It's like they kept adding on levels of seating as they needed more. They got like 70 scoreboards in that building so everybody can see the scoreboard from at least you know one scoreboard from their seat. Okay, let's talk about Buzz's bunch because it is something that is very important to Buzz Williams and before the game here at the Bradley Center uh, tonight and they did it also last weekend these special needs kids and their families out on the floor interacting with the players coaches and staff of the Marquette basketball program Buzz Williams has said this is one of the things that he wants to be known for not just coaching basketball and winning games but really having his team and his program involved in helping others and and it's great for these guys to to have this interaction with these kids who really are going through tremendous struggles in their lives because you lose the game to Wisconsin you think your world is coming to an end and, and then you meet a kid who might not be around in a year because he's fighting cancer and it, it really helps put things in perspective for everybody coaches players alike Devontae Gardner scores I also like the fact that it includes the families because it, it is an ordeal for the entire family as Gardner continues to impress on the offensive end for Marquette and the possession arrow to Marquette here and usually when there's this much of a point differential and it's late in the game Things start to get a little uh, unruly or scrappy. It hasn't really gotten that way yet. And I think in part because both of these teams play so deep in the last days. They cut short-handed. And, and the guys that are on the floor generally see a lot of minutes. And, and Mississippi Valley State, they'll go 12 deep. So it's not getting quite as sloppy as you might expect it might at this point in the game. Just watching Mississippi Valley State on defense, this possession. They're still playing very really hard, as that is good and a foul. As Jamel Jones connects, it, you look at a team that's down almost 30, but they're still working hard for their coach, Sean Woods, and he is as well. But nevertheless, Jones and Marquette in complete control. Marquette leading Mississippi Valley State 95 to 67. Dennis Krause with Jim McElvain at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Look at what the Big East is doing so far this season. Leading all conferences with seven teams in the top 25. And remarkably, Jim, five in the top 10. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very stout conference, although Big 12, Big 10, especially the Big 10, really projected prior to the start of the season to be the conference. Uh, and the ACC conspicuous in their absence there. Duke obviously contending for another national title, but um, injuries and you know all different kinds of things factor into this. And, and uh, the season usually plays itself out and, and things shake out. But you know again, just the sheer numbers of teams in the Big East and, and the number of great teams dictates that they're always going to be in the conversation. Here's the thing that's scary too: that the bottom end is getting better. Yeah. You know, Rutgers is getting better. You look at some big-time coaches as Eric Williams scores there. You got Steve Lavin now at St. John's, who's rejuvenating them. A uh, new coach at DePaul. I don't think that they'll be down for very long with the Chicago recruiting base, and so that's going to make the, the conference even deeper and stronger. Well, South Florida continues to improve, although they seem to have a bit of a setback. I, I heard last week Russ Gilchrist. Uh, left the team for some reason so get the drama sorted out he's a, a very talented player can help that team 
Marquette with 98 points. That's a season high, surpassing 97 against Prairie View A&M. Put back there by Paul Crosby. And Marquette with a chance to hit 100 for the first time since December 27th of last year against Presbyterian as popular walk-on Rob Frozina checks in. 18 career points. Looking to get into dub land. See that? He signaled three. I want a three. That's what he's <laughs> Is that what that was yes. for? Yes. I would like a three, please. The crowd would love it. You know that. Every time he touches it, they <laughs> want him to shoot. Doesn't he, matter if he's 40 feet from the basket. Shoot it, Rob. Shoot it. <laughs> like, just because he's a walk-on doesn't mean... He doesn't go through the practices in his discipline as the rest of these guys. He knows exactly what's expected of him, just as every other player does. And the minutes that he gets on the court, he makes very smart basketball plays. Eric Williams with the foul. And that will send Paul Crosby to the line for Mississippi Valley State. Marquette with 98 points tonight. You see in the record book some of their 100 plus scoring efforts. I remember that Delaware State game. <laughs> Big night for you. Big night for everybody. 105 points. Eric Williams. Marquette hits 100. Baseline jumper. That's his shot. Came in averaging 80 as a team and now to 100. So that average will just go up among the nation's leaders in points per game as D'Angelo Jackson is fouled. We are at the exact two minute mark. Eric Williams with his fourth foul. And he tried to stay vertical and, and avoid the foul, but just got caught deep and got penalized for it. Jackson hits the first. I want to take uh, just a second while we got two minutes left before things get too frenetic at the end of our broadcast to thank our entire crew, producer, director, John Walsh. This is the last of the six games that we will locally produce for Sports 32. Several more Marquette games during the Big East season will be on Sports 32, produced by ESPN Regional. But and a special thanks to Jim McIlvain. Always fun to work with you. You'll be going back to the radio side. Thank you, guys. Williams has trouble inbounding, gets it to Vander Blue. Sports 32, your home for Marquette basketball. And it will continue that way through the Big East season. Because of the limited numbers at guard tonight, Vander Blue putting in some big minutes, and he's fouled. And it's, you know, well within the sloppy range. And, and as a player, you just have to be aware of that, that the game is not out of control, but... You know, players get frustrated sometimes in these late game situations and and it can be precarious and dangerous and you just want to make sure that nobody gets hurt. Everybody gets out in one piece. When you played, did you find games around the holidays difficult? Just as far as maybe family and distractions and <laughs> there, you know, as much as coaches would like players to be able to spend time with their families. The, the team is your family and, and the holidays almost bring more focus because you don't have to worry about your classes you just go to practice every day you go to film session and you watch the walk-ons snare rebounds and it's you know Rosina got the rebound and this time he misses this shot got to use the backboard he knows that though Donald for three and he hits it. Marquette students on holiday break. Devontae Gardner has it slapped away by Crosby as we hit one minute left. On the bust out, a foul by Vander Blue as he helps up Kevin Burwell, who was fouled on that play. And you can see the sloppiness of the game when it, when it gets to this point. You know, the ball gets knocked loose, transition, slapping at it, and it's not that there's intentionally poor play or hard fouls, it's just 
these guys have been playing for 39 minutes and they're tired and, and their bodies aren't able to react to situations the way that they were at the beginning of the game. So uh, that's that's why you worry that guys might end up getting injured in, in a play like that where uh, at the beginning of the game not the case. So Marquette will go three and oh all time against Mississippi Valley State. This was their first meeting since an 87 62 Marquette victory in 1991. I remember that one too. Yeah. It's all coming back to you now. Alfonso Ford fourth all time leading score in NCAA history. That's just for the men. I'm not including the women on that. Eric Williams almost tipped it in. Marquette keeps it with 40 seconds left. Season high in points. Hitting 100 for the first time and now up to 102. Rosina under instructions from his coach to use some time, not hoist up a three to meet the crowd's urges. Although not adverse to getting fouled and sent to the line if that's what the defense demands of him. <laughs> Five to shoot. They can't run all the time off, so let's see if Vander gets one off, and he does. But they say after the violation, so that three will not count. Mississippi Valley State will get the last four seconds. Burwell misses, and Marquette gets its ninth victory of the season. Buzz Williams with a handshake for Sean Woods. Marquette defeats Mississippi Valley State 102 to 77 to improve to 9 and 3. The Delta Devils drop to 1 and 10. When we come back, we'll hear from Darius Johnson Odom, who was clicking from three point range tonight. So stay with us.